get a £5 free bet every week with Offer Club from William Hill. Simply stake a total of £20 or more across the week on pre-match football accumulators with four or more selections and you'll get a £5 free bet on the Friday. Join William Hill Offer Club on mobile or online now. This is Coogan Cassis for Eiffel TV. Fuck In out the room. I'm <laughs> <laughs> um, listen. I'm making wait to me fight. You've just turned up here, invited yourself in. I've got to have a word. I've got to have a word with me uh, management over this. I got a bit of. Uh, I got a bit of stick earlier on. Mm. I tweeted you and called you caravan boy, and people said that's racist. It's it not. Re it's not really racist, is it? Kogan calling me Chippo, uh, Pikey. Uh, Everything you call me off camera, and I do take it to heart. I've never ever called you either of those two words. Yeah, okay. But why is caravan boy? Why is that racist? You're insinuating that I'm pikey. Why? You do you live, or did you live in a caravan? I do live in a caravan. Yeah. Right there, you go then. So what's wrong with calling you caravan boy? Why not call me by my name? It's on my birth certificate. Well, Coogan, what is your actual name? Coogan. It's not Coogan. It is Coogan. Just Coogan. Yeah. Well, that was like a. I don't know, like a. Um, I, I don't think that is your right name. It is. Well, Muckbed. It's your real name. What is it? Hala Akbed. No. No, it's not. What's happening? Not a lot, Coog. Uh, just here in Glasgow now. Been here since Saturday. Left MGM last week. Over here now. Chilling out to the fight. In the room. In lovely Glasgow. It's very cold out here. Obviously, he was meant to fight on the Cardiff show mm. last week. Uh, problems with Akavov's paperwork or sank? Yeah, fucking... Wolverine. Wolverine, yeah. Something with Wolverine's paperwork, yeah. He, uh... Fuck knows, Coke. Fuck knows what it was. Something... With some sort of medicals. I know he was getting some medicals done yesterday or something. I know he was getting medicals done yesterday, so yeah, maybe, maybe so. So the main point of it is that you're fighting this week, regardless? Yeah, Coke, look, the way I look at it is... That... You know, when they, when they said it was off, I was obviously thinking, fuck, like, not fighting this year, but thanks to um, MGM and that, they had a show, put a show on, put me on it, shall I say. Albeit where it is, but I'm not complaining, it's a ring, it don't affect anything uh, with me, it don't affect nothing. It's just that um, I'll be fighting up in Glasgow, which I like Glasgow, it's good. As long as there's a boxing ring there, it don't matter if I'm fighting in someone's garden. Obviously, I've noticed people giving you a lot of stick because you've been inactive this year. This will be your first fight, your first defence of your title. You beat Andy Lee more or less a year ago now. We're in December now. You beat him in December last year. But I suppose your defence is that circumstances have prevented you from fighting this year. Not your fault? Or is it? Uh Listen, first of all, I picked the injury up and I tried to rush it back. And that's the main thing. I think when you've got injuries, you've got to let them heal. And uh, I'm not going to take any chances, any chance of getting in the ring to please certain people. I'll be in the ring when I'm fit, where I'm ready. And if it's took me a year to get fit, where I'm ready, so be it. I'm fighting first defence Saturday night. See them pictures of you. How long ago? So that fat picture you put out on Facebook. Mm. How long ago was that? That was June. She was quite fat then, wasn't you? 
I was a fat motherfucker. Cook, listen. I'm all out, all in, mate. When I'm doing something, I do it all right. A hundred percent. All out. When I'm not doing nothing, just don't do fuck all. It's the way I roll, Cook. It's the way I roll. So, I suppose the message behind that is, if you weren't a boxer, you'd just be a fat slob. Yeah. Counting your chickens. Is that racist as well? What? If I say you're counting chickens. Counting chickens? <laughs> Why? What's, what's that insinuating? Well, that's just, I thought that might be a racial slur as well. Counting chickens? What? No, but you do count chickens, don't you? That, you is, that is something you've done in your life, isn't it? Count chickens? Yeah. What do you mean, count chickens? Oh, the chickens. I count horses. But and chickens. Oh, your brother counts chickens. Yeah, I've got horses. Okay. I'm more the AP McCoy side of the family. I'm the jockey. I understand. Right. Um, oh, yeah, I was going to ask you, what did you think about um, Katie Taylor making a debut the other day in the programme? I didn't see it, Cook. Because you obviously had some words about a year ago. About her. I didn't have no words about her. Was it about women's boxing in general? Look, I'm not going to sit and lie. If I don't like watching women fight, I don't like watching them fight. I'm not going to say I like watching them fight to please her, to please the Queen, to please my own mother. I don't like watching women fight. Fair play to her. Like I said before, she done unbelievably well in the amateurs. Stuff that I can never dream of. Fair play, she's very good. She's a great fighter, but it's just not for me. That's fair enough. Can't get any fairer than that, can I? No. Everyone's entitled to their opinion. And that's my opinion. You can take it, shove it in a ball, and shove it up your ass before I care, but that is my opinion, Gogan. Fair enough. Well, we've got that one out of the way. You ask my opinion, I express my opinion. Right here. Don't fuck with me, Kogan. I know either. Do you know when you're bored? Yeah. You just think you go on Twitter, don't you? And you did it yesterday because I can I can see you there sitting in here bored and thinking, who can I slag off? Who can I give it to? Mm. So you think, oh, let's go back to old Eubank. Write a little tweet about him. Then you got into a little war of words with him. Correct. No, I'll tell, you, I'll tell you exactly what happened. I was speaking to Tyson Fury the other day and he won the world title on the 29th of October. November. N- November, excuse me. And it also flashed up on my page on Facebook that it was two years ago, it put on there since then. So I thought, yeah. So I put a tweet out. I said, that just... Uh, it was two years ago yesterday that I beat the, uh, I took the O of the biggest cunt in boxing, Eubank, flat nose. Well, I didn't say Eubank actually. I just said flat nose. And I didn't tag him in it, and then he started uh, tweeting me. So obviously I'm just in here, obviously bored. So I just tweet him back because I know it cuts him like a knife. I know it cuts him like a knife. But listen, I'm not lying. I, pff, I did. Even, everyone hates him. Everybody hates him. He's got a cheek to get on Twitter and say about I'm fighting a leisure centre. He was fighting in... What's that shopping centre called? Blue Water. Blue Water. At least I'm travelling out to Glasgow and fighting uh, uh, swimming baths. But there's a difference. What I earn and what I've got and what I'm earning Saturday night, he, pff, he will never see. That's definitely for sure. Never see. So, um, well, he had a chance of seeing it to fight Glofkin, to fight me, but he clearly missed it. And now, um, and now he's just fucked because now I don't really want to do have, have any business with him. And I know, like Frank Warren put a tweet out, but he's fighting me, but it won't happen. I won't let it happen. He'll have to wait and wait and wait till he gets in a position. Where I've got to fight him. Because I say good luck to anybody who earns money, Coke. I really, really love to see people doing well. 
Um, I think it inspires other people, but I wouldn't give him a chance to earn a pound off of me. No way, not him. Yeah, but if it meant you being financially rewarded, then surely that goes out the window, whether he's earning or not. Not really, no. I've already set my head what I wanted to earn out of boxing. I've earned that comfortably. I'll just do what I want to do now. I'm world champion. I want unification. Why do I want to go back and fight him and I'll beat him? Alright, unless you're going to give me stupid money and then stupid, stupid money that I'm going to get for unification or more, then yeah. But apart from that, no. And it would have to be stupid money. Because... Let's face it, he's a little circus fraggle, isn't he? It's, it's how it is, though, isn't it? It's just not, nothing straightforward. He had his chance to fight me. He got offered a million quid to fight me. I thought it was 900 grand, but I don't... Speaking of Frank the other day, it was actually a million quid. So for him to turn that down, he can go and sit on his dad's phallus. That's what I think. So it comes down to you just don't want to give him a payday now? After all it's not this. that I don't want to get. Listen, it's not that I don't want to give him a payday. It's just I can't be able to entertain him. He's had two chances and turned them down. It's not so that he's. It's not so that he's unbeaten and he's got the win over me and I want to fight him again. I beat him. I want Golovkin now. Golovkin or Canelo. That's the big fight I want in the new year. This one, not overlooking Akavov. Hopefully, kick his last. Move on to one of them. The big fights. No, let's test myself, see how good I am, because I'm sick to death of fucking... Oh, it's this level what I'm sticking at, I need to be bang, another level now, let's see how good I am. But you know people sort of looking in, obviously not knowing all the things that go on behind the scenes in boxing, the politics, etc, all that shit. They'll just look at it as in, like I said, you haven't fought this year, you've been mentioning Golovkin and Canelo pretty much since you won that world title, but obviously... It hasn't happened yet. So, 2017, hopefully you come through Saturday night, everything goes well. 2017, these fights have got to happen for you, haven't they? I surely? will make it my job. I've been on to my management, MGM, Frank Warren, and I, they know what fight I want. They know what fight And that's no shit talk, no rubbish. That's the fight I want. Golovkin fight. I've said I'll go to America. So yeah, but now BT's involved. It's a different ball game, isn't it? Now BT's involved. You could get them over here. You can get, you know, it's it's, it's, it's a big, big change, isn't it? Yeah. What What do you make of that whole situation? It's, it's great for boxing. Thirty shows next year. Uh, Twenty across BT and Box Nation. Ten on Box Nation. Um, good for good for the whole of boxing, really. Yeah. Well, I think it gives. Now you know you got to look at Frank. He's got to start up, and he's game as a promoter now. He had to start signing new fighters, putting it out there, giving fighters, uh, you know, good deals. I mean, he pays very well. I will say one thing about Frank: there is no Eddie Hearn wouldn't pay the money Frank Warren pays. Definitely not. I mean, I know what some boys get on Eddie Hearn shows. Um, and put it this way: if if Eddie Hearn had a fighter fighting in Paisley at this leisure centre, he'd be fucked. He wouldn't better pay for a turkey for Christmas. Seriously. But Frank is paying me extremely well for this. So I've got to thank him. You know, so he, he pays very well. You know, it take other young fighters and sit back and have a chat with Frank Warren about just about the money he pays because he do pay well. But he's got to get his pen out and start signing loads of fighters now because, you know, he's got to, you can't just put on any shows. You've got to put on good shows. So you could really be... Sp- Spearheading the the BT Box Nation charge next year. You being the face of the channel and all that. Could be, Cook. Could be, mate. You never know. You never know in this life. We could walk across the road tomorrow and get hit by a bus and dead. Like them poor people on the plane. That is true. I never plan ahead. Ever. I plan on winning Saturday. <coughs> That's definitely for sure. What um did you watch the Hay and Belly stuff yesterday? Yeah, I did. Yeah. What did you make of that? I think it's good for boxing, isn't it? Um, I think that I think Belly conducted himself well. The better out of the two. Mm. What about Hay 
attacking Eddie Hearn. What did you make of that? Look, I know Eddie Hearn gets under a lot of uh, fighter skins, doesn't he? He don't get under my skin, I don't mind Eddie. Um, I think people react different. I mean, David is used to doing his own thing. He's used to setting up his show here and he's used to saying, I oh, want this there, that there. With this show, I, I should imagine it's only minor things that he's got in his favour, really. Like the size of the boxing ring. People sitting down at press conferences, I heard think about, or some sort of shit. But at the end of the day, it's all a load of bollocks, because that don't really matter. When the bell goes, it's all on in it with everybody. He yeah, was quite entertaining yesterday. You've been in some. Well, actually, you... I was saying you've been in some entertaining press conferences, but it's the Eubank one, really, wasn't it? When you finally got him there, because he didn't turn up to a few of them. That's what I mean, you little pussy, isn't he? Like, why is. What what fighter don't want to turn up to press conferences? He thinks. Do you see, the problem is the Eubanks is. They think boxing. They think boxing owes something to them. That's what they think. Um, and it's a very selfish way to think because at the end of the day, boxing is about us earning money, but also, more importantly, and just the same, shall I say, I reckon, is the fans. Because if someone's working a nine-to-five job and they're getting grand a month, say, for instance... They got to find two hundred quid of that grand to have a night out of the boxing. So I think you got to really put that into perspective as well. And and that's the reason why I want to test myself because it ain't only about me. It is about the fans as well. And I'm not talking shit or bollocks because I just say oh, it is. But when you put it down to that, like I was speaking to a man before and he was saying, oh, I didn't get paid. I'm not. I haven't got paid this month. Like I'm getting paid. Or he got paid late or something. And I I drove away and I'll give him the ticket. I didn't charge him for the ticket, I'll give it to him. I was just thinking to my own self, do you know what I mean? What some people do, like, just to come and watch you fight or something like that. And there's more than one what does that. And I think that's good, obviously. So, yeah, but with them, they just, it's all about them and it's all, con it's just about them. Fucking, that's why nobody likes them. Dad's a bell end, son's a bell end. They are literally penises. No, Coogan, you're laughing, but I swear to God. I'm not laughing. I generally, I do just despise the people. And if ever he beat me, I probably would have never, ever box again. Never in my life. So you said that have... when you first fought him, didn't you? Yeah, but if, I, if he beat me, I'd never, ever, ever want to box ever in my life again. But there's only one problem. Even he's, He wasn't born good enough to beat me. I was born good enough to get semi-fit and beat him. Six weeks training. That's all I had for him. I'd still done that. And he's an athlete and I'm a fat, out of shape, fat pig out of training. And I still just beat him. I'm not fat anymore, though. You're in shape now, aren't you? Yeah, I'm in good shape. Um, Just read today that Conor McGregor's been granted a boxing licence from the California State Commission. Looks like we'd be getting the Mayweather-McGregor fight then, doesn't it? I don't know, Mayweather doesn't fight out of Vegas, and that's Nevada, so I don't know. But obviously thinking about it, for him to apply for a boxing licence, but... Or it could be a business catch, couldn't it? You know, it could be a little publicity stunt, not that he needs it. could be a little little um, hook in the pond with a bit of meat on it for Mayweather to bite at, maybe. Possibly. Maybe so. I mean, there's just some. Let's face it. Conor McGregor fight Mayweather for ten million money. Should imagine the fight be worth more than that. But I'm saying he would fight him for ten million. So all the hundred millions and hundred and fifty millions, he's starting high because he can always come down. But realistically, he would fight Mayweather for ten million. Hundred percent. I know I've spoke, we spoke about this before, like about a year ago, about the the possibility of McGregor and and Mayweather and. But do you think all this sort of? I mean, we heard Amir Khan not too long ago said that he wants to 
do Emma Meyer? Uh, well, look, it's just everybody wants, everybody thinks it's all glitters and gold. Like they're looking at Conor McGregor and thinking, we want a piece of that. I want to do that. You know, and it's just not, it's just, you only get one of them come around every so often. Not not often at all, to be honest. And we've got Conor McGregor there. Well, Ireland's got Conor McGregor, so, you know, I don't think, look, put Conor McGregor in the ring with any British level fighter, Conor McGregor gets beat. You think? Yeah. Any, like, I'm not saying you're, you one who's been nursed a little British title and then go ahead, but any decent level British title fight, he get beaten. In my opinion. Again, it's only an opinion. <clears throat> MMA, different story. I think that he's good. I think he's good at what he does. It's just a different ball game, isn't it? Would you be good at MMA? Yeah. I would be good at MMA. All this ripping and going and pulling. Yeah. Kicking and I'm not much of a kicker to be honest, but when I do a few windmills and I let the windmills go, <laughs> the occasional knee comes up. It can get pretty messy. How oh, bad? It can get pretty messy. Um what did you make of um the situation regarding Nick Blackwell? It's such a it's tragic again, isn't it? That... Well uh First of all, Nick's a friend of mine, right? And I would say when I see him, it's a very stupid thing what he done. But look, he he loves that. Same as with Tommy Martin, you know, another friend of mine, forced to retire. And just when you talk about boxing, you can just see in his eye and face, you can just see that it pains him so much. Like people sit back and think, oh, listen, don't box them, but. I, like, when I first heard it, I used to think, like, fucking, yeah, like, it's so easy, don't box no more. But when you speak to these boys and you look in their eye and they're talking about boxing, it's like they're going to cry. And I'm thinking, fuck me, like, what's, what's all that about? It just means so much to them. And then for them to have that little bit of chance to, in their head, thinking, right, I'm all right now, I feel good, I feel fit, I'm going to try and spar. So I can see where Nick Blackwell's come from in a bit, even though it's a stupid thing to do. But who sparred him and who owns that gym? I've never watched anyone now, basically. Well, look, I'm going for the captain of the ship, of the gym. Who undone that door that day? That gym should be shut down and they should be sacked, fired off. Never to be involved in boxing again. Because that is suicide. That is suicide. And I don't care who you are. You put any fighter in any gym or any situation, and someone says, do you want to fight any fighter? Anybody's going to... If they said to me now, do you want to fight Joshua on the 10th, I'm going to say, yeah. No fighter's going to say no. So if someone said, do you want to spar, he's going to say, yeah. And the fighter who got in the ring and actually thrown punches at him, he needs a good slap. I agree. Definitely. And, and yeah, you do. He needs a hiding. Because that's ridiculous. Topped off of a night with you in the bed. Naked. What? Topped off for his punishment. A night in the bed with you, bald naked. And you got you got time up. You give it to him. It's a disgusting thing to do, isn't it? You are disgusting. Alright. What am I just saying, Coke? What else has been happening? Not a lot, Coke, really. You're not getting much. You're not getting much. What you want out of me today? Are you? No, it's early. In, well, it's not that early in the morning. You've got a presser in about an hour. I've got a presser an hour. I'm chilling out. What are you going to do in the presser? Kogan, it's not a lot I can do, is it? It is what it is. This poor fella coming over, like he's coming over to take me to and whatnot else. He should be told. I'll put manners on him at the press conference. He should be told what's going to happen. What ain't going to happen. And that's about it. But when I'm making weight, I just like chilling out, laying back, watching a bit of telly. I bit got up this morning, I had a nice shower, I brushed my teeth, check weight, come back up, drink, laying back, watching TV. The next thing I do, next thing I know, there's a knock on my door. I look through the keyhole, and there was this, 
this brown species out the door. <laughs> and then I see eye film glittery everywhere, and I thought, oh, it's Kogan. And that's it, then you just got your camera out and start a video. Basically, that's exactly what happened. So, yeah, like, basically, not a lot. So, not a lot really is going to happen. This pro you want to see all the punching and didn't you? you want to see I want to see Wolverine slap you around the face. That'd be the worst thing Wolverine ever done if he slapped me around the face. <laughs> because uh, what if there's bottles, chairs, whatever there is and whatever there ain't, I will be throwing 100%. And I'm, I'm sorry if there are children watching, but that would definitely happen. <laughs> I'm going to go and see Wolverine now and say he's talking about his... What are you going to do it? Wind him up, tell him to do something like that. Can I'm, you go and see him now? I'll probably have to wait to the press. I've never met him before. Akovov. He ain't in this room. He ain't in this hotel. Oh, is he not? But I'd like to see him. Just to give you... You know, like Chisora slapped that poo left. Like that. One of them quick, sharp ones. That'd be great. Then the fight will start two days early. Because I just punched straight into him and whoever's in the way. Simple as that. If he tried to slap me. Seriously. <laughs> I think that'd be the worst thing someone could do is slap me at a press conference. Because it's on. Would you rather be slapped or, or spat on? Spit on me, mate, and that's it. It's, it's definitely it. It's all on. It's all on. The gang's out as well. The gang and us, we'll all, we'll all start. Alright, well, listen, I'm going to let you, uh, whatever. And uh, I'm going to go downstairs. One o'clock, don't be late. Got anything else you want to say? Get out. Alright, calm down. That's about it. Out. Or what? Get out. Or what? Because I'll smash the camera up. You're smashing shit up. Out, I said. <laughs> what are you going to do about it? Don't do your eyes at me, Coop. What are you going to do about it? No, I don't touch your camera. Because last time I touched your camera, you nearly had a baby over Yeah, it. don't fuck about with the camera. Ready? I'm going to give you a flash, bald naked. Bang! <laughs> Alright, Billy Joe Saunders, thanks for talking to IFL TV. Fuck off. Let's just have a little zoom in on the old pack. Don't, there's no pack. Wait, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> 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 Get out, Cody, now. I'm going, I'm going. Get out now. Don't, because you actually will. Get out. Don't, because you smashed me camera up, Bill! Get out! Put a bone down! You prick! <laughs> you fucking idiot, Bill! <laughs> fucking throwing bottles at me, you cunt. <laughs> Fuck, <laughs> Fucking idiot, you are. <laughs> I swear to God, you're an idiot. <laughs> prick. You just <laughs> actually fucking threw that bottle right at me, you cunt. <laughs> you throw that bottle at me, what? I, should what you gonna... I should tell my management to come and escort you from the hotel. Fuck off. Take your bottle, prick. Alright, I'm going. Speak to that one. Amigo.